Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Adam Jones. I'm Chief Revenue Officer with the Miami Marlins. It's a pleasure to join you all this morning uh, and uh, contribute into the conversation uh, of today's conference. Uh, my background, uh, three years now with uh, the Marlins, prior to that, 15 plus years advising uh, the, the sport and entertainment industry. Uh, you know, the, the path uh, to the Marlins has been an interesting one uh, in terms of advising across the leagues, the member clubs uh, focused here uh, in the United States, uh, but supporting the global network of firms uh, at PricewaterhouseCoopers. Uh, it was uh, an incredible opportunity to really immerse myself uh, in, in so many aspects of, of this industry and positioned me uh, for what has been, you know, the generational opportunity, and that is to uh, architect and, and and strategize and and now lead uh, the 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 growth of uh, of a sustainable business uh, here with uh, the Miami Marlins. Uh, today, we want to talk through uh, the culture of data within uh, the business of sport. Uh, it's a, a topic uh, near and dear to. Uh, my, my past life, as I refer to it, uh, as well as the um, way in which we're informing decision making, you know, here with uh, the Miami Marlins. Uh, when you talk about sport and business and, and data, um, in, in many ways, uh, it's an industry that's viewed as ahead of the curve. Uh, it's often uh, the uh, subject of a lot of case studies uh, with the emerging technologies. Um, more so probably because the audiences enjoy uh, talking about sport more so than maybe they do uh, other industry. And that's certainly been uh, a standing that sport has benefited from uh, having been the subject and the participant uh, of in so many case studies and proofs of concept uh, around data and analytics uh, and how we build data culture within organizations. Uh, and it's about 15 years now in the making uh, in which we've been in this awakening uh, of data uh, within how we design uh, and operate uh, sport organizations. Uh, when you peel back the, the curtain on sports, uh, you know, these are still uh, at their essence, you know, small to mid-sized uh, operations. Uh, there's generational ownership. Uh, with families uh, across still many uh, of, of the teams within the major professional leagues. Uh, but we are, are starting to transition into that next generation of, of, of ownership and, and with new ownership has come uh, new forms of, uh, of leaders and backgrounds of, uh, of those leaders. Uh, and it's through these last decade and a half, um, you know, that the industry uh, went through its awakening and, and really now uh, beginning to place data and data-driven decisions at, at the core uh, of its culture. Uh, but stepping back a bit, you know, to, you know, the awakening itself, uh, you know, the baseball sides of, of these organizations or the sport performance sides, you know, were out in front of, of the business uh, organizations. And so baseball analytics and uh, its history all the way back into the 80s and then uh, becoming more commonplace uh, through the 90s and certainly by the, the early 2000s uh, is what gave comfort uh, across sport organizations to begin to align and, and adopt you know, data practices within uh, decision making. Uh, so definitely the businesses have benefited from what uh, has been um, you know, growing culture on, on the baseball or, or performance side. Uh, beyond just that um, proof of concept or acceptance within each organization has been just the growth or proliferation of, of technologies. Uh, and because brands have gravitated towards sport, you know, as, as the interesting case study for uh, their audiences, um, sport has definitely benefited uh, and become awoke uh, or woken uh, at a much quicker pace uh, because of, you know, those proofs of concept uh, that so many organizations have been, you know, lucky participants and, and, and beneficiaries of. Uh, sport as an industry has many maturing, you know, lines of business. 
we have tickets, sponsorship, media, other in-park uh, revenue sources like food and beverage and, and retail. And because we've reached you know, the mature end of, of the cycle of those lines of business, uh, there's a need to preserve business, but find a way to drive yield out of those maturing lines of, uh, of business. And, and as a result, uh, you have to turn to that data to find you know, that, that next opportunity uh, to dig a little deeper and hold on a little longer uh, within you know, some of these lines. And we'll talk more about those as we go you know, further into this session. Uh, but I'd, I'd say one of the aspects that has probably been you know, the, the true uh, accelerator of, of the industry's awakening has been elevated expectations. Uh, we've onboarded new owners and those owners have invested significant sums of, of capital you know, into these organizations and taken on uh, leveraged positions to the point uh, where you know, these are now being run as, as true enterprises uh, more than just uh, you know, you know, fit the family business. And so with that elevated expectation is the need to be that much more informed, that much more precise uh, within how we design and, and execute um, on a daily basis. Uh, so digging a little bit into, you know, the, the Marlin story, uh, we're three now years into the, the new Miami Marlins, uh, and it's been uh, a book in and of itself uh, through these first three years. Uh, 2018 was really a year of, uh, of listening uh, for our organization, understanding through those first 26 years of the franchise what had worked, what hadn't, uh, what was important. Uh, what did we need to carry forward? Uh, and really when you're building these type of enterprises, it's the trust uh, that you're able to earn with the residents and, and businesses in the community uh, that set these up as sustainable enterprise. Uh, so 2018 and, and then into 2019, uh, there was a lot of listening. Uh, and then we began to invest. We invested in a new brand. Uh, we invested in the cost of attending a game. Uh, we invested into the experience itself, broadening the appeal of a going to a Marlins game uh, so that it appealed not only to the baseball avid, but uh, to more casual consumers, families, and, and social entertainment seekers. Uh, and then not to be forgotten are the investments, uh, contrary to some public perspective or uh, perceptions uh, that have been made since day one uh, into the baseball side of, of this organization. Uh, and so these uh, have really been plans in motion uh, when it comes to the baseball uh, and the business or the brand and the experience side. Uh, in 2020 uh, will be the year uh, that we'll look back on uh, where we reached you know, that first inflection point uh, within our path forward, uh, having reached the postseason um, in, in a very challenging year. Uh, after 17 uh, seasons uh, on the outside looking in. Uh, really, this is a, a moment that we look at as just progression uh, against the plan, uh, one that obviously we're very proud of and believe is born out of the investment and the work uh, that has been put in uh, over these last three years plus. Uh, but one, as we look back at, you know, 2020, and for all of us, it's been an incredibly challenging year. Uh, one that there's a tremendous amount of, uh, you know, pride and, and validation of, uh, of the plans we have put in motion. Uh, we came into 2020 uh, all the way back in, in, in February, uh, really riding um, accelerating curves of momentum, both on the field uh, and as a brand and, and a business. Uh, and the disruption of, of COVID, you know, definitely uh, has been a challenging one uh, for not only us, but the entire live entertainment industry to absorb and begin to pivot and evolve um, you know, away from. Uh, for us, you know, the, the story will start and, and really end for many on what was accomplished on the field. Uh, working through the adversity of an outbreak within the organization uh, to being able to achieve that, that first postseason appearance in, in those 16 plus years. 
for us uh, on on the brand and on on the business side, it's making sure that uh, the community is beginning to lean in and and pay attention, you know, to this story, uh, the investments that have been made, you know, into the baseball, uh, as well as into the brand and into the experience. Uh, we're very pleased with you know the impacts we've had on our existing audience, uh, but for this to be sustainable and the real objective here is to build a first-class organization that delivers to a world-class standard in terms of uh, experience and, and engagement. Uh, we, we have to build a business uh, that's out in front of the baseball um, and is positioned to, to really thrive on uh, all of the upside that you know, the on-field performance will, will generate. And as we talk to our existing audience, we have them play back to us you know, the impacts and the positive movement uh, that they've all experienced. Uh, but we know there's a much bigger market out there and we're going to need, you know, the entire South Florida market uh, to, to lean in uh, for this ultimately uh, to go where we intend to take it, you know, which is where uh, South Florida is year in and year out competing for championships and in, in baseball. And the Marlins are a lifestyle brand, you know, threaded across you know the, the the lives of residents and businesses in this community and really becomes that that source of uh, of community pride and a rallying point and so for us this was really the year to start asking the question you know are you paying attention yet and we're certainly hoping uh, more are uh, as a result of the on field this year but as we you know turn the the, the page to, to 21 it's it's less about um, you know the the one off of, of 20, but more what's underneath that uh, and the investments that have been made, you know, in the overall organization top to bottom in positioning it not only for talent at the major leagues today, uh, but all the way through our, our system, moving from ranked dead last uh, in a minor league system to now within the top three to five. Uh, you know, the amount of talent that is coming up and having managers and players considered uh, for national awards, uh, all very important and very early returns on, you know, a plan we have in motion. And, you know, a quote that our CEO Derek Jeter offered at the end of this year uh, really goes back to that day one commitment that what we're building here uh, is something that will be sustainable. And as great as 2020 was, uh, at least when it comes to the on-field result, uh, it was merely a stepping stone uh, in terms of what we intend to create moving forward. Uh, beyond on the field, you know, in this disrupted 20, uh, it was first and foremost important for us to have an impact and do our part uh, in the community and, and make sure that those uh, who were in need, uh, you know, are, are being served and, and addressed. Uh, and very pleased as part of our new organization to um, you know, reset uh, on our foundation and, and channel our resources towards uh, a narrower but deeper scope of initiatives that uh, can have that meaningful sustained impact in the community. Uh, underserved um, and, and, and food security uh, or insecurity were certainly areas of focus for us this year uh, and pleased to at this point uh, have put almost a half a million meals uh, in the hands of those of, of need, uh, as well as a number of other areas of relief uh, to, to our community. For the business side, uh, really focused on, you know, making sure that that 2020 wasn't a, a lost year uh, in terms of our, our progression as, as a brand. Uh, unfortunately, the season was delayed. Uh, we were unable to um, scan a ticket uh, and bring a fan into the ballpark, uh, yet we wanted to make sure that we continued to engage our existing audience uh, as well as extend the reach of uh, our engagement to, to new audiences as well. Uh, and working with our brand partners uh, and, and focusing on, on digital content, uh, we are pleased uh, in, in the results that we were able to achieve, you know, here in a disrupted 2020 of making sure that, you know, we were able to hold and deepen engagement with that existing audience, but bring uh, new viewers, you know, into the fold as well, 
and, and really start to prime that audience to be consumers of Marlins baseball uh, as we turn the page to, to 21 and, and beyond. Uh, so here, just a, a few of the metrics that, you know, as you look at a scorecard, devoid of, you know, our, our typical metrics of, uh, of revenue and, and attendance, uh, making sure that, you know, we were able to hit the mark within those things uh, within our control. Uh, from viewership to social engagement to digital uh, content consumed uh, to brand sentiment, uh, all you know, very favorable, positive takeaways from, from 2020 uh, that really gives us confidence and, and validates a lot of the plans you know, that we do have in motion. So, you know, it's stepping back from, you know, the Marlin story um, and, and beyond the awakening of, uh, of the industry, um, you know, more than uh, 10, 15 years ago is, you know, understanding that there's, there's culture uh, around data and, and how data is used within organizations. Uh, so beyond the recognition, you know, it's the, the war that's been won around culture that, has proven to be the most impactful um, across the industry, uh, but specifically, uh, you know, was a day one priority, uh, you know, for the the new Miami Marlins. Uh, when you look at ultimately what tips the scales, uh, you know, towards a, a data informed culture, has been the proven impacts that data has had on on those who choose to leverage it within the decision making. And then, you know, to give credit where it's due, uh, it's, you know, the familiarity and the comfort that, you know, not only your uh, advanced data practitioners have with um, data flow and, and, and utilization in, in, in business, but across the board, um, you know, having staff that, uh, you know, have had more formal education uh, around data and analytics and are much more comfortable either taking direction uh, contributing into or being presented to uh, with insights uh, to inform you know their actions moving forward. Uh, when you look at the the value of uh, of data within you know sport and, and entertainment, it it comes in a, a few different roles, um, and then you can look at the different industry initiatives that we're really focused on. Um, and, and trying to you know, leverage data uh, across our, our, our lines of business. Um, and when you look at the, the, the roles that, that data play, um, certainly data is informing strategy. Um, and then underneath strategy, you know, those executional plans. Uh, we're, we're getting there when it comes to using data to actually manage our, our workflows and, and progress uh, against the plans. Um, and then the final, you know, aspirational target is how we use data within, you know, the near time or real time, you know, flows of, uh, of an operation uh, to, to make sure we're best positioning ourselves in, you know, each one of our touch points with, uh, with, with a fan and, and a consumer. Um, and how do we take all of, you know, those, those roles and apply it to our industry focuses of, making sure that we're creating an in-venue experience that is deserving of time and, and dollar. Uh, and here with the Marlins, you know, very you know, pleased with the investments we've been able to make within um, you know, Marlins Park uh, to reimagine the experience, position it to that broader audience as I uh, referenced earlier, uh, and make this uh, a destination in, in South Florida, uh, whether you're a baseball avid or a more casual fan. Uh, so from creating more social sections to reimagining the food and beverage experience, um, you know, Marlins Park has transformed into, um, you know, an experience uh, in terms of people's time and entertainment dollar uh, that, that we're really excited about. You know, fan engagement in general, uh, trying to find a way to keep fans engaged beyond just 81 plus states of, of home games. Um, using digital content to extend uh, that reach uh, across um, the time between uh, games, whether home or, or away. Um, but in terms of investments into the games themselves, uh, making sure that you know, we're staying current in terms of how we're 
packaging uh, commitments uh, in the form of season tickets, uh, rethinking, remodeling, you know, what that type of commitment is, where do we extend benefits uh, to recognize, you know, the investments made, you know, how do we give them more flexibility? Uh, and with the Marlins, we've created the, Mar the, the Marlins members, which is really a 12 month platform rather than a transactional 81 day relationship uh, to really recognize those who invest the most time and, and dollar with, with, this, with this organization. On the fan reward side, uh, loyalty programs, rewards programs, uh, a big area of focus in the industry. Uh, we have home run rewards uh, here with the Marlins that uh, recognizes both transactional activity as well as engagement. Um, using data to inform, you know, how we, um, you know, size uh, point earning opportunities, how do we price uh, reward opportunities within instant redemptions, auctions, and, um, and, and sweepstake opportunities. Uh, within mobile commerce, how do we create content that, you know, is compelling uh, and worthy of engagement? How do we drive more people into uh, you know, mobile utilization and adoption uh, in terms of how they engage with us uh, at the ballpark, uh, which opens up uh, you know new universes of of data for us to 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 mine and and leverage within becoming smarter uh, and going more personal. You know, with our approach to to every fan, and then they're really that elusive target of how do we attribute you know, the resources we invest into building awareness and, and driving, um, you know, demand uh, into the brand on the marketing side and being able to tie those back to transactions. Um, a very elusive target, not only in sport, but beyond, uh, but making sure that data is there to, to support us in, in that effort. Within the, the, the data value chain, this sort of starts to dive into you know, where data is informing uh, the activity of sport and, and, and where, you know, we're currently falling, you know, somewhat short. Uh, if you look across, you know, the, the value chain uh, in trying to use some, uh, some shading here to, to highlight, uh, you know, the darker blue representing where there's been more existing or uh, a more extensive investment by, by the industry. Uh, the lighter representing where we're just starting to, to really scratch the surface in terms of, of investment and, and capability. Uh, but it's really at the, the two ends of, you know, the, the chain where uh, most, you know, sport capability, you know, sits today. Uh, there's, you know, been a lot of effort to capture um, data, you know, within uh, and across uh, the, the business activity. Uh, from our own sources to those that, you know, we can uh, leverage from external partners. Uh, and then you accelerating all the way to the other, you know, end of the chain. Uh, there's obviously a desire to make sure that those outside of the business analytics team, uh, you know, can leverage that data uh, for, for insights. Uh, and so how do you visualize the, the data and present it in a form that's you know, digestible to, you know, that, that broader audience. Uh, within the, the, the middle of that chain is where you start to uncover, um, you know, some of the, the, the weak points uh, or the underdeveloped points within, you know, sport infrastructure. Uh, there's been a, a decent amount of investment and effort made around how do we aggregate all of these disparate sources of, uh, of data. Uh, but ahead of that, how do we make sure that what we're ingesting is, is clean and, and organized? And then once we've been able to aggregate that data, uh, making sure that you know, we're able to use AI and other machine learning uh, to, to really uh, run more complex calculation and develop the insight uh, off of the data. Uh, I think there's generally common recognition across sport that uh, having data for the sake of data uh, is is no longer uh, uh, sufficient uh, or or the standard. Uh, there certainly was a point in time that this was far more a check the box exercise than it was substantive and truly at the the core as to how these organizations 
uh, have operated. Uh, but what you'll see as you start to look at the data, data objectives is we've really oriented towards and prioritized, you know, the informing, you know, side of uh, why investing in, in, in data. Uh, and there's plenty of logic to that. Um, and it has what it has built and, uh, and sustained, you know, that, that data culture uh, that the Marlins and many others have, uh, have adopted. Uh, but beyond, you know, informing decisions, you know, how are we able to use data to better predict future outcomes? And we'll talk a little bit more about, you know, pandemic uh, related considerations moving forward. Uh, but, you know, predicting uh, the, the future is, you know, been something that for us as a growth brand, you know, here in, in South Florida, you know, set COVID and uh, in its disruptions aside, uh, you know, the past really doesn't predict the future uh, in terms of what we intend to build. Uh, so how do we use more near time data uh, to inform than relying on historical precedent, uh, you know, incredibly important. Uh, automating and personalizing two other aspirational targets uh, that will become increasingly more important. Um, but you know, is where you know, the opportunity cost has been created given some of the limitations and resources available. Um, it's also the area where generally the case studies and some of those proofs of concept where uh, uh, technologists have been wanting to invest in sport, uh, you know, generally fall uh, a bit short uh, given that those are fairly often not uh, one-off endeavors but really require sustainable uh, in, in multiple years, um, sustainable investment in multiple years uh, to, to realize and, and maintain uh, moving forward. Uh, but the ability to automate um, is what's going to allow us to build um, um, back out of a pandemic in uh, a leaner, uh, more right-sized form uh, without losing the capabilities that uh, we've unlocked uh, to this point. Uh, it's also as the business accelerates, um, which today, um, you know, the velocity is, is not at the point where um, it's an all in on automation, uh, but certainly as there's more acceleration, there's more opportunity with automation to, you know, realize additional upside. Uh, the personalization uh, really speaks to how we're able to engage the consumer uh, on a more tailored, you know, personalized basis, which is absolutely, um, you know, our aspirational goal. Uh, we have gone through the exercises of at least beginning to recognize that not every consumer is the same, uh, not every game uh, or Marlin's product is the same. Uh, so how do we begin to develop personas and, and segmentation schema that uh, allow us to speak, um, you know, to our consumers, uh, and we have over ten uh, that at this point at the Marlins we we focus on um, and build products and experiences and messages that you know resonate with you know each one of those those profiles. When you think through you know the the barriers to sport investment and, and what we've unlocked in, in terms of, of capability to this point. Um, there, there's a few things to acknowledge on, on the system side. Uh, you know, probably first and foremost, jumping down into, you know, the different sources that are out there uh, is what rights do we have, um, you know, to data. Um, in, in sport, we rely um, on many external partners uh, to execute um, and support uh, the enterprise uh, from in, in baseball, Major League Baseball, uh, but very similar constructs across the other leagues uh, to our brand partners, to our service providers and different data services that uh, we, we license. Uh, you know, what rights do we have to the data that's born out of our, uh, our ecosystem? Uh, and therefore, how can we ingest that and what can we use that data for uh, that we're able to capture um, is certainly where we've come up uh, against you know, walls um, in this industry and many others uh, outside of sport. Uh, across the systems, and there are a number of 
systems that uh, exist within a sport organization. You know, how do we make sure that you know those systems are are speaking to one another? Um, obviously, integrations uh, are expensive propositions, um, and in sport, uh, you know, where the resources currently you know come up a bit short in terms of being able to seamlessly integrate. Um, you know, across uh, our, our ecosystem uh, to really unlock all of the connectivity that, you know, we would aspire to, to have. Uh, very often, it's not just uh, about the dollars, but um, that the systems that are leveraged in this industry are at varying, uh, you know, stages of their own development. Uh, some have been around for decades, others are only a few months, uh, you know, or, or years old. Um, and so the backbones and, and are, are very different. Um, and so being able to get those systems to talk together is not as simple uh, as, um, you know, open API type formats that, you know, you may have in, in other industries. So there's legacy ticketing and, and CRM uh, challenges uh, that, that have to be overcome uh, but all of which is what unlocks, you know, the upside that we have, you know, as, as, as an industry. Um, you know, a growing challenge and where we've had to pull back a bit uh, in terms of, of capability uh, has been around, you know, data privacy and, you know, what, of what we know about uh, our consumers and, and their behaviors uh, can we track and store and, and leverage uh, for purposes of, you know, future engagement? Uh, beacon technologies and venues and uh, privacy settings on, on, on mobile uh, phones, um, you know, has definitely slowed down, you know, what was an accelerating industry uh, and capability within sport to be able to um, understand our, our consumer uh, in a fairly near real-time uh, way and then offer them an experience um, in that same moment uh, to that whole aspiration of, uh, of personalized uh, experience. So it's been my pleasure to share uh, a little bit of the Marlin story, uh, a little bit of you know my scorecard of where we are as an industry uh, and um, bringing data uh, front and center uh, to, to how we, we go to market and inform our operation. Uh, we've got plenty of work to do, uh, which is how we assess ourselves here at the Marlins uh, across the board, um, you know, but really excited about you know, what the, the path forward looks like uh, as an organization, as a brand, and you know, how we're using uh, data and analytics and the insights uh, to, to really power and and, and drive you know, us towards that, that goal of um, being that source of pride for South Florida and competing year in and year out for uh, championships. Thank you.